so then finally we get the match, and it's no disqualification. They still had to gimmick it up. Um, and it it they didn't really need to, but I I'll, I'll accept it in this because both the and both these guys, Hammerstone has been a heel, or at least he was when I was there. And I believe this is a, a kind of a heel heel matchup, but Hammerstone is the nominal babyface because Fatu is a monster. And Joseph Samael came out with Fatu, the 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 almighty Sheik, uh, who was working with him when I was there. I don't know who the guy in the horror movie mask was. They stuck him in the Contra group somehow. But it was title versus title. Hammerstone won the national open weight tournament. I called those matches. So that was two years ago. And I called the match where Fatu won the world title from Tom Lawler. So they've both been champions for a couple of years. And they're the by far the two most credible guys in the company. Um, I will say also the ring announcer, I don't know who he was, but he looked like a 80 year old drunk homeless bum or a professor Irwin Corey, if that might not be too old a <laughs> reference. I thought that was good though, because I'm sick of these young smiling. Everyone's just so happy. I want an old crusty ring announcer. Well, this guy will comb your hair and, and button your fucking collar and, and tighten your tie up. Fucking Jesus Christ. He looked like goddamn. What was the professor's name in Back to the Future? Bill Apter. No. No, uh, no. Do Dr. Emmett Brown. <laughs> Bill Apter? <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was trying to pop you. Christopher <laughs> Lloyd is where I was going with it. Bill Apter. <laughs> he doesn't need to comb his hair. Anyway, um, both guys were out in tents. They had their game faces on. Hammerstone is jacked. Fatu is a beast. And for once, Fatu was a slightly smaller guy. Now, he's lost some some weight. He's he's dropped weight on purpose since I've seen him in person last. But not often would he be manhandled, but Hammerstone did it. And, well, you tell me what, Fatu's a natural. All his shit looks great, the way he moves, the aggression, the facials. And you can just tell, I've mentioned what an incredible worker he is. I said this on the program when I called this match and I brought it to his attention. He didn't even know he did it. But there was one time he was having a match on one of their TV tapings I did and he went for that springboard moonsault and as he was going over backwards, I swear to God, unconsciously he saw that he was going to land on the fucking guy that he was moonsaulting and he lifted a leg and landed on his left knee and his right foot with his knee up in just the perfect place so that he wouldn't potato the guy on the moonsault. And he didn't even realize he'd done it. He's just a natural worker, and the way he moves around the fucking ring is, is impeccable. And it was a big man smash mouth match, you know, that... that you don't see anymore because these guys take themselves seriously as badasses. Fatu did that moonsault off the guardrail barefoot onto Hammerstone, gave him a pile driver on the apron. I don't know why they did that one. But anyway, what'd you think of, of Fatu in this, this one before we go any further with the et cetera? Well, he's great. He's a main event kind of guy. And he's like you said, a natural in the ring. Moves really great. The spot with the moonsault off the, um, well, he was holding on to the pillar and he was standing on the barricade. While impressive, I didn't like the fact that Hammerstone's standing there for 30 Hammerstone seconds. Hammerstone had to wait. Well, yeah. it wasn't 30 seconds. But well, you know what wait. I'm saying. It wasn't 30 yeah. seconds. It was, it was probably five very, very long seconds. <laughs> <laughs> five very, very long one. But no. One Mississippi, too. But other than that, which is a, all things considered a minor criticism, I thought Fat 2 looked great. I thought Hammerstone looked great. These two guys look like main event guys. Well, and and then Fat 2, and I, you know, again, the no DQ, they didn't spend 20 years on the floor or just do everything, but they did rattle a little bit of furniture around. But Fat 2 did the coast to coast drop kick with the chair, which for his size is ridiculous. And then they were making a hammerstone was making a big comeback because they were headed to another break spot and he hit a bicycle kick and if you slow mode this i don't know how he didn't break the ankle because he's 270 pounds and he came down on his left foot and 
the reason why I hate those type of leaping kicks and shit is because in those wrestling rings and they're bouncing and guys are running on them. And when you land with all of your weight on one foot, either a knee or an ankle can go. And in this case, it was the ankle. He sprained it badly because it went sideways. You can go back and slow-mo it. I'm surprised it didn't snap. And he finished the rest of the match with that ankle. We've seen the pictures of it on social media since then, giant and black and blue or whatever. But they go to the break again. They come back, and then now Fatu's cooking, and he hit the Samoan drop, and he almost missed a senton off the top rope. He got him, but he almost overshot him. But then he hit a dive through the ropes like Darby Allen, where it's he just launched himself and body blocked the guy. But instead of Darby's 150 pounds, this is 260 or whatever. Um, Hammerstone hit a dive at his size with a bad ankle and a missile drop kick off the top rope that knocked Fatu ass over tea kettle. They stood exhausted and wailed away at each other, and that's where it started going too long, because I like a good one-two when it looks like a Rocky movie. But this spot has been prostituted, as we've talked about, where guys just stand and trade. And even though they were selling each one of them, and they went a little long. And then finally, uh, Joseph Samael interfered, and Fatu pulled out a table, slid it in the ring, and said he was actually strong enough to pull it out and slide it in and set it up and put him th and uh, this is the uh this is a, a callback as the kids say because when he first debuted they had Fatu beat the fuck out of a guy and they were stretching him out and he just jumped up out of nowhere and moonsaulted the this the guy on the stretcher which I thought was a cool spot but he puts Hammerstone on the table, covers him up with the flag. Eh, I don't know. I know he's Contra, but he's also a beast. I don't know if he'd have that much eye for detail. But then he moonsaulted Hammerstone through it and got a two count. Okay. I'll buy that. Are they selling? No. Hammerstone popped up right away and made his final comeback. Power slam modified F5 because I'm pretty sure with the bad ankle, he couldn't do his regular finish. One, two, three. They got to that point, and I liked the match, and I liked both those guys. But then they got to that end point, and it, the finish came off flat, and it was a, what? It, they could have done exactly what they did if Hammerstone had moved off of the table and Fatu had moonsaulted through the table and then immediately Hammerstone had hit his finish. Boom, one, two, three. I would have bought that so much more than him getting moonsaulted through the table, popping back up without selling it. Yes, to show that he's strong, but still now just boom, come back two moves, one, two, three. They lost the momentum. Just ever so much there at the end. So if they could have tightened that up, move on the moonsault, pick him up and hit your fucking finish, one, two, three, I think it, that the finish would have been perfect. But as it was, these two ought to be on national television. They're grown men, and they can do their shit. And if they had a high-dollar production, it would look a whole lot better. And if they had a bigger building with more people in it it would have looked a whole lot better yet and if we hadn't had to sit through a table discussion by four fucking willy-nilly marks about other people's companies it would have been better yet i thought that you know there were moments i didn't like i hated when all of a sudden the trading blows i've been talking a bit i've been ranting about it on the shows lately and there they are doing it towards the end of the match. I think, by and large, if you took this match, as it were, and put it on an AEW show, the people there would have been reacting and really been into it. In this case, it was kind of like when Vic Steamboat won the title from Tony Atlas in ICW. <laughs> Actually, no, because they had a big pop. I mean, that was the problem. They had this match, this big moment, the big title change after whatever you said, a couple of years for both guys. There were some fans celebrating, but no one seemed to really be treating this match like a major match. Maybe I'm wrong, because again, the audio did suck. The opening yeah. audio, you couldn't even hear the announcer, so maybe the audio did, was not picking up the room. And I did see some people 
cheering, but it didn't. It's Philadelphia. You have to take a chainsaw to a baby to get people to really shit themselves because of think all the things they've seen. If I had unlimited of funds to start any wrestling promotion anywhere in the world, put it on any television network and hire anybody to be in it. The one place that I would not go is Philadelphia. Second in line would probably be Florida, but they have seen yeah, you ain't lying. Well, if, if, if Philadelphia, because they've seen every possible thing you can see and they're the smartest fans and the, at the same time, a lot of them the most blasé fans, because unless you do full-on garbage and kill somebody, you can't move them. They've seen everything. I wouldn't go to Florida because they've had free wrestling promotions of throwing the doors open for the past 15 years at almost every show. Come in, please, for free. We'll pay you. So, but yeah, the... <laughs> The response, no, if you put if you if you put Jacob Fatu on WWE programming or AEW programming or any programming with any people and any production value whatsoever, and you smash him over for six weeks or so, the people would be ready to buy anything he does. And Hammerstone is a classic example of a he's he's a modern Lex Luger, and that may not sound like a compliment. But it is because, as we've mentioned, Lex got it finally in, what, 89, 90 matches with Steamboat, matches with Flair. If you had that Lex Luger around today looking like that at that size and can work like that, he'd be a megastar. It's just the field was so much more crowded then. And Hammerstone has more personality than Lex did because he's not as uncomfortable being himself and doing what he's doing. So there they are. But uh, I like the match, but it was a, it was a, it was a wonderful portrait in a crummy frame. How's that? The other thing is the commentary. The one guy just kept telling us what a big, big match this was over and over while we're watching the match. And then the fans don't react like it's a big match. I don't know. Well, also, I think Rich and MSL, and for the audio mix especially, and I've mentioned audio mixes are the worst part about wrestling. Their voices are too similar. You couldn't tell who was responding to who in some cases. And I thought that that, that was a little disorienting verbally as well. Or Felt like watching Broadway boxing on SNY. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, someone in New York knows what I'm talking about. Well, there you go. Well, somebody in New York... We're calling you anyway, but we wish uh, Hammerstone well in recovering from his sprained ankle. And, you know, I'm thinking maybe as, as, as he recovers, he's obviously at home. He's got his, his foot up on a, on a pillow. Maybe he's icing his ankle, whatever. He's probably, you know, wanting to, to eat as healthy as possible to make sure that he, comes back in as good a condition as if he has to miss any time. And of course, part of that, when you're sitting around with your foot up, or your ankle sprained, you need to eat a good breakfast, don't you? Don't you, Brian? I would think so, especially when you're laid up and injured. A very, and maybe while, while he's out, if he has to miss any appreciable time wrestling, Hammerstone can become their mascot. You know, like th those, those other cereal companies... They always had mascots. They were sugar pushers to kids, what they were, you wascally wabbit or Count Chocula. Well, we need to have Alexander Hammerstone extolling the virtues of the healthiest cereal on earth, Magic Spoon. You, what do you think? Would, would he be good to push Magic Spoon? Would he do the promos like, if you don't eat Magic Spoon, I will decimate you with the nightmare pendulum? Or he'll just bicycle kick you and break his own leg. Regardless. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, I was trying to get some help for that. But I'll just move on. <laughs> Folks, if you're trying to eat better, not eat the unhealthy carbs and sugar and junk, and you want to have a nice breakfast, 
but you don't want to eat all that stuff, go to the folks at Magic Spoon. The amazing flavors you love without all the bad stuff. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, only four net grams of carbs in each serving, 140 calories a serving. Keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, high-octane, whatever. Build your own box. Now they've got all kinds of flavors. The cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, cookies and cream, maple waffle. Somebody was retweeting. They have even more flavors now. They have not updated their copy. So we got to check in on that. But you can pick your own box. You can build your own box. Build your own custom bundle. Just go to magicspoon.com slash gym. Pick out all these delicious, indulgent flavors. Try them or get them again if they're your favorites and use the promo code Jim at checkout to save $5 off. Remember about the 100% happiness guarantee. If you're not tickled shitless, they will give you your money back. No questions asked. If you don't, for any reason, if you're not happy, if you don't like the cereal, they'll refund your money. If you don't like the amount of your tax refund check, they'll refund your money. If you don't like your wife's blowjobs or lack thereof, they'll refund your money. Not in the spot. Come on. It says if you're not happy for any reason. Oh, you mean just about the cereal? Reasons involving the cereal. Reasons if you're not happy for any reasons involving the cereal, they'll give you your (laughs) money back. But if you don't like the gum job from old Emma there, it's your own fault. You'll have to pay for it. Gums? (laughs) Yeah, the the gum job. (laughs) All right. Jesus. From their from their devoted wives. If if you're a devoted wife who's given your husband gum jobs, order him magic spoon. He won't complain as much. Anyway, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal. Are you editing all of these out? Get your <sighs> next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash gym and use the code Jim to save five dollars on your order. We thank Magic Spoon for sponsoring this episode, the final <laughs> episode under their sponsorship. It's a probably. fantastic cereal. We all it's a like great it. Cereal. Jace Nakarado was telling me the other day he just ordered a whole bunch more. He loves it. Everyone involved with the show loves it. Everyone we've turned Magic Spoon turned Magic Spoon onto. We've turned onto Magic Spoon. Yes. They love it. Yes. They've all got smiles so wide they got stretch marks on their lips. Magic spoon. Okay, good, good, good. I was afraid where you're going to go there again. What, what are you talking about? I'm just saying they're happy. They're smiling. Good. They're contented. Good for them. Keep smiling, Magic Spoon. You got to keep smiling just the, to keep on smiling. The keep same on way smiling everyone out there does when they eat Magic Spoon. What are you singing? You're laughing singing? every day. Got to keep on smiling. Keep on smiling. Keep on smiling.